last week, we used the puppets and we talked about King Mosiah and Alma and Alma the Younger and the four sons of Mosiah and how they'd been bad and leading people away from the church then saw the angel and changed their ways and those sons of Mosiah then went off on a mission to the Lamanites. Well this week in the Book of Mormon, King Mosiah is getting towards the end of his life. He realizes he's an old man, he's about to die. And he doesn't have any sons to pass on the kingship to because his sons are off somewhere else teaching the Lamanites. So he thinks about it and he prays about it and he realizes there's a different way. We don't have to have a king. We could set up a system where there's judges to take care of the things that the king normally does. And if someone breaks the law, they can bring them before the judge and the judge can take care of it. Well. King Mosiah decides that's, that's a good idea, and he gives it to the people, presents this idea to them, and the people vote on it, and they think, yeah, this is good. We remember how much a bad king, like King Noah, ooh, that can really cause some problems. And we can't always count on having good kings, so let's set up this system of judges. So they do that, and then it comes time, King Mosiah and Alma, the father Alma, both die at this point in the Book of Mormon. So now we're left with Alma the Younger being the chief judge. He's in charge of all the other judges that were set up in the government. And he's also the high priest of the church, leading the church. Um, and the church goes through lots of different things. They, they have good times, they have bad times, but they reach a point where they're baptizing a lot of people into the church. Um, the church is becoming quite wealthy. There are a lot of people who are doing very, very well in the church. Uh, unfortunately, some of the people in the church are not doing things the way that Jesus would want them to do them. They're not being kind to other people. They're looking at other people in the church going, huh, I'm better than they are. And they got this idea that they're more important than anybody else. And Alma was praying about this. This bothered him because this isn't the way the church is supposed to be. We're supposed to help other people. And these people were not helping. They were hurting. And as Alma prayed about this and thought about it, he decided that there was only one thing that he could do. He needed to not be the chief judge of the, of the government anymore. They needed to elect somebody else, so they got somebody else to do that. His name was Nephi Ha. And Alma was going to focus just on the church now. It says in the scriptures that he did this so that he might go forth among the people, that he might preach the word of God unto them, to stir them up in remembrance of their duty. What are they supposed to be doing as church members? He needed to remind them of that from the scriptures and from the things Abinadi had taught that he might pull down the pride and the contentions which were among his people, that he might reclaim them by bearing down in pure testimony against them. So Alma knew that the best way to help his people was to bear his testimony, go out and talk to the people, help them remember what it is that Jesus taught. What am I supposed to be doing as a member of this church? And so he does that. He sets up, leaves somebody else in charge of the government, and he goes down to bear testimony. Now, bearing testimony can help in so many ways. It doesn't have to be a formal, like in church when we have testimony meeting and you go up and you bear your testimony in front of other people. It can be bearing testimony to your family. It can be to your friends. It doesn't have to be a long, formal thing. Just sharing what you feel to be true um, can help others and can help others feel stronger. I know um, when I'm sitting in testimony meeting and somebody bears their testimony, say, of the Book of Mormon, and they're talking about how they've read it and they know it's true, it reminds me of all the times that I've read the Book of Mormon and that I have learned that it is true. And the Holy Ghost bears witness to me again of how true the Book of Mormon is because somebody else has borne their testimony. So I want to challenge you to find a way to bear your testimony. 
see if maybe in family home evening you can do it or in family church since we're meeting together as families talk to your parents see if there's a time that you can bear your testimony there's no words that you have to say no right or wrong way to do it just talk about how you feel about heavenly father how you feel about jesus and their gospel talk about the Book of Mormon, or your family, or the temple, or prayers that you've had answered. Anything that has to do with Jesus and his gospel, if you share your feelings about that, it will help other people. I want to bear you my testimony that I know Heavenly Father loves us so very much. He set up this plan where we come to earth and we get to get a body and learn all the things that we need to learn here on earth. He sent Jesus here on earth. Jesus came here, he lived, he died, he was resurrected. He did his part to fill Heavenly Father's plan. And because he did that, we can go back and live with Heavenly Father and Jesus again. We can be with our families forever. I know that when we do the things that Jesus has asked us to do, when we live his gospel, we are happier. Um, it, it's always better if we're keeping the commandments. We feel better inside, and that's the way that we can be happy. And I leave that testimony with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello. We're going to sing you a song about our testimony. Spirit whispers this to me and tells